But there is a serious point here. How many of the 810,000 Australians who say they're Aboriginal aren't? Shouldn't we sort that out before anyone agrees to the voice in advisory parliament just for them? Aboriginal activists say up to 300,000. 300,000 of these 100,000 are not really Aborigines. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I do know that at least 130,000 people said they were Aboriginal in the last two censuses who hadn't said that before. Now, maybe an audit of that will come, maybe not. Joining me is Roger Carr, who runs the brilliant website Dark Emu Exposed. Roger, your team includes professional genealogists who show that Bruce Pascoe was an Aboriginal, who showed that another professor claimed to be Aboriginal, didn't have a single Aboriginal ancestor in her genealogy. He helped us expose another woman who wrongly claimed to be Aboriginal, the Labor candidate, in last year's Victorian election. You're working on another case that I've been told just five minutes ago I can't discuss involving a very senior political figure who also claims to be Aboriginal. We'll get onto that perhaps another day. Does there need to be some kind of audit of Aboriginality? Uh, because identifying, of course, as Aboriginal can get people a lot of privileges, jobs, grants, cheaper medicines, bragging rights in politics. Uh, hello, Andrew. Um I'll just, in terms of broad background, where I'm a scientist, a historian, or I do amateur historian, and we do genealogy work, and I'm constantly getting um, informants, Aboriginal people, some of them almost in tears on the phone to me, saying, Roger, we don't think this person is Aboriginal, right? But Aboriginal people are very, um, they're very polite. It's not good form to criticise other Aboriginal people in public. So what we do is we just go and look at the genealogy. We say, all right, here's a person. The Aboriginal people from that region don't think that person's Aboriginal. So we just do the genealogy and we say, here's what the genealogy records say. And there must be five or six academics who we've done that on, including Bruce Pascoe, and we can't find any evidence that there's Aboriginal descent. And to be classified as an Aboriginal in Australia, you need the three-part rule. And one of the parts is you have to have Aboriginal descent. So it's very unfair on Aboriginal people to have... Who, they allege these people are not Aboriginal. So all we are trying to do is try and help them and try and stop what they think is a lot of fakery. Now, one way to do it is... I'll give an example of an Aboriginal guy. He's in South Australia. He wants his two sons to go to TAFE. So he, there's, a, there's an opening there. If you're Aboriginal, you, can get a, a, um, you don't get any money, but you get a fast track in. You don't have to quite wait as long, which is fair enough. We want to educate young Aboriginal people. TAFE are doing their job. They said to this Aboriginal man, look, we'll take your sons on the Aboriginal stream, but you have to prove that your children are Aboriginal. You can't just make it up. You can't just do a declaration or stat deck like they do at universities. So he had to go off and he goes to the NT NTS... Corp, right? That's it there. So they do it for free. They've got all the records of Aboriginal families, all the mission reports and everything. They'll do your family tree for you, right? You take that certified NTS Corp family tree and you go to the Office of the Registrar of um, uh, Aboriginal Land Rights Act and they write a letter. And this is the certificate to this man saying, we approve this family tree, you're Aboriginal. Now, I can't understand why anyone in a senior position, a professorship, a politician who claims to be Aboriginal, can't do that, which is what working class Aboriginal people have to do to get their kids into TAFE, right? And then all you have to do is do this and away you go and then you're Aboriginal, no questions asked. But the, the, the elites don't seem to want to follow these rules that the working class Aboriginal people have to follow. I mean, it's not rocket science, Andrew. You know, if, if you go if now, you go to the Roger, post office and say, I want a passport, yeah. but I'll just say, if you go to the post office no, and say, I want a passport, exactly. the, pass, the post office doesn't give you a passport without, without documentation. But, well, I tell you what, the senior political person <laughs> that family. I'm not allowed to mention on legal advice, and it drives me crazy because uh, the evidence is pretty clear to me, So, but I can't sort it out on air. I don't know that they've done any of that. I don't know they've done any of that. And I'm going to have you back because I will not let this go. This has been too hard, 
to uncover a lot of this, the sort of battles we've had with, you know, the woman who claimed to be of the... the academic who claimed to be of the Winninini tribe, which doesn't exist, you know, and yet gets a senior academic role. I mean, it's unbelievable. A lot of Aborigines are upset about it, and we're going to uh, do something about this latest case, I hope, tomorrow. Thank you very much, Roger Carge.